Hello, my name is Krista Jones, founder and CEO of Virginia Leadership Institute, and welcome to A Seat at the Table. Our show really tries to bring in experts and community leaders to talk about how you can get your seat at the table. And one of the things we're gonna talk about tonight is leadership development. So we talk a lot about getting to the table, but let's talk a little bit more about what to say when you get to the table. How do you stay at the table? Who should be around the table with you? And I have two wonderful guests tonight who are gonna explore that topic with us. First, we have Craig Pfeiffer with the Northern Virginia Regional Board of the Sorensen Institute for Political Leadership and Ramonda Young with Ramonda Young, Inc. Welcome to A Seat at the Table. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So let's start with Craig. Just talk to me a little bit about your leadership journey. How did you get to where you are today? I've always been very active in politics, but I've also been a career public servant in nonpartisan government. I've worked in local government for the last 20 years. I started my career with the Roanoke City Public Schools in Southwest Virginia, mm. and then moved over to the city government. Um, worked for seven years in Roanoke, starting the city's website and working in communications. Then I moved to Alexandria 12 years ago, and I've been working in communications here uh, over the course of my tenure on the website and in other areas, and now I'm the director of communications. So uh, while I've uh, pursued a nonpartisan career, I've also been active in partisan politics. And along the way, I've been involved in a lot of nonprofit organizations that relate to the things I've worked on in my professional life uh, or volunteer pursuits. So I've had the opportunity to serve on many boards of directors and in other leadership positions in nonprofit organizations. Excellent, thank you. And Ramonda, talk about you know the different organizations and your business. How are you? How did you get to where you are today? Well, you know, I think it actually started when I was in college. Mm -hmm. I think I really saw the fire uh, there when I was at Lynx University, and I've been always very passionate about women and seeing women succeed. And so back at Langston, I started the National Council of Negro Women, Langston University section. And it was just about 200 women that came together that discussed issues that were important to us. So that fire kind of sparked even back in college and getting those women to see the best in themselves even then and what we could do. So it started in college, um, after college, moved to the DC area and just really got heavily involved in the community and looking at how could I be a part of the community, make a difference, whether it's serving on different boards, whether it's volunteering in a lot of different ways and getting my sorority involved in those kind of things. Those, that's kind of where um, I started. And with Ramonda Young Incorporated, we have a huge focus still on empowering women Excellent. and equipping women. So it's, it's been a great journey from college to the profession, my professional career and to starting my own company now to really equipping women to succeed. Wonderful. So Craig, talk a little bit more about the Sorensen Institute. Just as what type of work does Sorensen do? Sure. The Sorensen Institute for Political Leadership is housed at the University of Virginia. So it's a nonprofit, nonpartisan academic program that focuses on building leadership skills among people who are active in the political process in Virginia. We have five programs. Our flagship program is the Political Leaders Program, which is a 10-month program every year. The participants represent all different backgrounds, geographic areas, ideologies, demographics, and come together one weekend a month for 10 months. The curriculum consists of public policy, issues in Virginia, ethics, and campaign mechanics. And by the end of the program, not only have the participants learned a lot about those topics, but they've also really bonded with each other, formed a lot of connections that they can uh, use for the rest of their uh, lives together as friends and the rest of their careers together in politics. And the way I put it is that we are looking for people who are going to be players in Virginia politics and trying to make them better at it mm -hmm. for the sake of Virginia. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not just people who are interested in running for office. It's also people who will be PTA presidents, planning commissioners, uh, campaign managers, policy analysts. Uh, we've had journalists and bloggers. We've had uh, business people. And we have over 1,500 alumni now, not just in that political leaders program, but also our high school program, our college program, our candidate program, and an emerging leaders program for young professionals. We have about two dozen alumni who serve in the Virginia General Assembly, uh, two members of Congress, Excellent. and our lieutenant governor is also an alum. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. A great record. I'm actually a 
graduate, a 2006 mm -hmm. graduate of the Sorensen Institute, and it has made such um, a difference and the way I've just approached different issues in the community, and it's a fabulous program. Mm -hmm. okay. So Ramunda, talk a little bit about both, okay. you know, what you're doing personally with Ramunda Young mm -hmm. and SOAR, mm -hmm. and also Leadership Prince William. Absolutely. Uh, Leadership Prince William, I'm actually a 2014 graduate of Leadership Prince William, and it's a 501c3 organization based in the Prince William County area. It actually serves Prince William County, Manassas City, and also Manassas Park. Mm -hmm. And it's a 10 month long uh, program that really kind of give you, gives you the behind the scenes aspect of Prince William County. I, I tell people, I, I kind of tell people, it, it you peel back the veil mm -hmm. of Prince William County and you get to interact with various leaders. You get to get in depth um, behind the scenes access to the arts or uh, the parks and recreation. So you get an up close and personal look at different aspects of the county. And it's amazing because you bring this group of dynamic CEOs or entrepreneurs or local government officials all in one room for 10 months. Um, and we hash out a variety of activities, a variety of issues that we see facing our community and coming up with solutions. So it's dynamic that you get to collaborate with that very type of population. And we love it. I sit on the Board of Regents right now as the Alumni Engagement Chair and we have about a 300 alum currently. And again, they are in, you know, you name the industry, we have an alum in that area. And it's great to kind of keep them connected to Leadership Prince William. So dynamic program, dynamic leaders. Um, another great aspect is our youth leadership mm -hmm. piece that started with my class 2014, <laughs> I might add. Um, but it was important to us to groom the people after us. Mm -hmm. How do we, you know, promote leadership to them? How do we instill the values of leadership? Mm -hmm. And so I'm very proud that we not just only create leaders as adults, but also go back and reach the young people. So dynamic organization. You know, one of the things you both mentioned, what some of the things both programs have in common is just kind of the networking aspect and just how it's important to bond as a class. And, you know, I really think in leadership development, that's key. You know, with Virginia Leadership Institute, mm -hmm. one of the things I've noticed about we'll put a lot of effort into bringing great speakers and have fabulous sessions. That's all really important. But the magic happens when you see someone exchange cards. Will you be on my campaign? Or will you do this for me? So that is such a key part. Can you talk a little bit more about other ways your organizations are making impacts in the community? Absolutely. I'll talk about leadership principles. I mean, there's so many ways, but two that come to mind right now. Um, we started the Greater Prince William County Food Council, actually members of my class, 2014. And it just came because of one of the sessions we looked at was focused on social services. And we went and, and met at a couple of organizations that really give back to the community or really impact, um, whether it's the homeless or I think we also visited um, a transitional housing. Mm -hmm. And so that group, after visiting those organizations came back together, again, class members of mine, and said, what can we do? How can we benefit? How can this population, how can this part of our community benefit from us coming together? And the Greater Prince William Food Council was born out of those conversations Excellent. that really are focused on giving back food and making resources available to a lot of those organizations that we visited. So that's one I'm very proud of. Mm -hmm. And then something that's a little bit more personal to me that just started, it's called PWC Scope which is Prince William County, it stands for Prince William County Smart Chicks on Politics mm -hmm. and Entertainment. And it's comprised of four women, three who are Leadership Prince William alum actually, and women of color who've come together to discuss candid issues that affect women, um, not just in Prince William County, but women across, across the, the United States, so to speak, but it's from our voice, our perspective. And it's again, because we share that common bond of Leadership Prince William that experience that we can come together and have those candid conversations. So that experience led us to these kind of connections in those kind of conversations. Excellent. So very proud of those. Excellent. And li likewise, Sorensen really emphasizes dialogue, mm -hmm. and it's a very personal program because you're spending a lot of time with your classmates, mm -hmm. and you're traveling together, you're spending the night in hotels together, you're mm -hmm. eating dinner together, and uh, then you have the classes and speakers um, themselves. So there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction, and it is not so different than the one-on-one -on -one interaction people have in real life, except mm -hmm. that people tend to interact with people like them people who agree with them already. Mm -hmm. And one of the things Sorensen emphasizes is having discussions with people who you disagree with, but yes. doing it in a respectful 
way and trying to focus on the merits of the discussion and not on the personalities, the politics, things like that. And so I, I think the goal is that when people get to these positions of influence in the political process, they are also focusing more yes. on listening, mm -hmm. less on winning. Yes. And the goal, of course, is to further the interests of Virginia. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know that most people in the programs are either Democrats or Republicans. Uh, we're not taking sides and saying that one is going to be right and one is going to be wrong, or that one is usually right and one is usually wrong, but that in each individual public policy decision, we should be doing what's in the interests of the Commonwealth, and we can only do that by listening to each other, by understanding the issues, and by making decisions that are based on, on actual merit evidence, data, needs, rather than on politics. Exactly. And really, you know, Virginia Leadership Institute and the current model I'm using is partly born out of Sorensen because a lot of, I was unsure if it should be bipartisan, you know, just one particular party, but I was really moved by a lot of the conversations and just like you're saying, a lot of the different perspectives that are mm -hmm. shared in that classroom for Sorensen. So that's why it was very important for me to make mm -hmm. Virginia Leadership Institute a nonpartisan organization or mm -hmm. one that embraced all parties to really make sure we just make sure African-American mm -hmm. voices are represented, not one particular party. And then I definitely have to concur in terms of the relationship building. You know, I just got an email a few weeks ago from, from my Sorensen classmates in 2006, it's been almost mm -hmm. 10 years, about just getting together to connect and see where we all are and how we can support each other. So mm -hmm. Sorensen, I can definitely see mm -hmm. where it's making a long-term impact. Um, so what types of work are the graduates doing? I know you definitely mentioned, you know, some of the people that have been elected or the numbers in different fields. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit more about some specifics that your graduates are doing now? Sure, absolutely. We, like I mentioned earlier, we span so many different industries. Some of our alum, they have their own law firms, mm -hmm. or they've started nonprofits, mm -hmm. or they are in local government, or they are doing so much community service and, and impacting our youth. We do a lot of mentoring um, as alums as well. So we, we span everything. I mean, you name the industry, we do it. And I love that because there's a good cross mix that if I needed to talk to somebody in community service or public service, that I could reach out to an alum because of that familiarity, yes. uh, familiarity that we now have mm -hmm. um, that I probably wouldn't do so prior to that program. So just having those connections and knowing I can pick up the phone to anybody that was in that program or, or have a question or needed a favor that, you know, that really could uh, benefit me in that way or the group that I'm working with. So uh, we're across a lot of different industries. Um, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are part of Leadership Prince William too. And I think that's a great um, opportunity to connect with them and to find out, you know, their skill set, their experiences, and how can we take that back to our corporate um, um, operations as well. So. And you know, Craig, I'd also be interested in hearing how you feel personally, the skills that you learned in Source, and how has that helped you personally as you've advanced in your career politically? Well, it may sound um, simple, but one of the biggest benefits I've gotten from Sorensen is talking with people I would have otherwise avoided. Mm, and uh, okay. that's what politics often does. <laughs> it tends to make you want to hang out with people like you, who you agree with, and demonize the people who you don't agree with. Mm -hmm. And so for me to wind up spending uh, 10 months with people who I would ordinarily never even be in the same room with uh, was really eye-opening. And you start to view each other more as people, as mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. You realize that both sides in politics tend to use hyperbole, tend to exaggerate the mm -hmm. potential consequences of the other side getting their way. Mm -hmm. um, and um, often um, you realize that both sides are actually very frustrated having mm -hmm. to keep up that charade. Mm -hmm. And if people can talk to each other one-on-one, -on -one, um, they often find that they agree on a lot of the, of the um, underlying issue. Mm -hmm. Now they might have a different approach to how they're going to get to the outcome, but they both tend to want to same uh, outcome in the end. And that was really eye-opening for me. I still call on a lot of these uh, friendships and connections. I've been able to use Sorensen alum to help advance legislation that uh, should not be partisan, doesn't mm -hmm. need to be partisan, and so we're able to have those 
um, those real conversations. Uh, we've um, spent a lot of uh, time together just as friends. Uh, alumni tend to socialize together and tend to meet each other when they're in town. Uh, when the classes in the current year come to a given city, the alumni will often come hang out afterwards together. And so it reminds you that you know, before we're Democrats and Republicans and <laughs> independents, we're just people, we're Virginians. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, I totally agree, totally agree with that assessment. I think that's one of the beauties of a lot of these leadership programs that you get this good cross-section of people that you may not even talk to or interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. And now you're kind of forced to be in this space that, to have those conversations and to build and to learn. So I think that's a, the beauty of, of a lot of these programs, a lot of these leadership. If they're done properly, I think. Right. If they're done properly, if the selection process or the application process is done really, really well, I think you get a great mixture of people and personalities and viewpoints. So yeah, I think oh, it's worth pointing out that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party both have various leadership programs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's important if you want to try to advance a cause as a party for you to develop leadership skills within that party and to focus on the issues that form your party's agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're saying is basically there's a time for that and there's also a time mm -hmm. to look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sorensen offers an opportunity for people, regardless of their political ideology, to come together, uh, even even if there are also more specific leadership programs within those parties. Excellent, great point. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about some of the specific types of things that you're learning in these programs. So I actually am a new member of the Junior League of Northern Virginia, and while the Junior League has a certain reputation in some parts of the U.S., it has been really gratifying to be around and to be in an organization that is focused on the development of women. Mm -hmm. So meaning that while we're a community service organization and we network and we socialize, when one of your basic principles is developing the leadership potential of women, that gives you a different focus. So everything we do, whether it's the training, whether it's the mentoring, whether it's the hands-on work, um, whether it's raising money, they're preparing these women to lead volunteer organizations. So we're learning how to work with volunteers. We're learning how to um, financial management skills, community service, learning how to research a project to figure out how uh, to best implement in the community. Can you talk about some of the more specific ways that we're grooming leaders in the programs that you're involved with? One of the uh, foundations in Sorensen is the actual public policy um, uh, knowledge and education itself. So in other words, before people can make good decisions, they have to understand the facts, they have to understand the issues. So many of the speakers in the Sorensen programs are leaders themselves in the areas they're representing. Uh, if there's a talk about the court system, it might be led by a justice of the Virginia Supreme Court. If there's a talk about transportation, it might be led by the Secretary of Transportation. Uh, we have a lot of experts in their fields who come in and volunteer to share their expertise with the class. There are also a lot of field trips, if you will, a lot of visits. Mm -hmm. So if you ask most Virginians, are you aware that there is a major port in um, Southeast Virginia? They would say yes. Are you aware that coal is a major industry in Virginia? They would mm -hmm. say yes. Do you know that Virginia has an extensive prison system? Of course. You know there are a lot of farms? Sure. But the reality is very few Virginians have been to any of those places exactly. in person. Well, in Sorensen, you get to go to a coal mine, you get to go to a prison, you get to go to a poultry farm or to a port, and you start to see a less abstract version of all of these issues that you read about in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And also something that I didn't realize at first is how important it is for people to physically experience p different parts of the state than yes. they live in and, and they grew up in. And when I started the program in 2003, I actually lived in, Virgi in uh, Roanoke. And by the end of that year, I had moved up here to Alexandria. So I, I got to see what it was like for people in Northern Virginia to come yes. to Southwest Virginia for the first time. And then now I have the perspective living in Northern Virginia, looking out on the rest of the state. And if you've got 140 people in the General Assembly who have to make decisions about Virginia, and they haven't actually seen Virginia, mm -hmm. it's very difficult for them to make good decisions. That's right. So one of the simple uh, parts of Sorensen that's, I think, the most important is that it moves around the state and people get to see Virginia before they start 
influencing Virginia. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, you know, one of the classes that I remember most is the budget class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, it's the hands-on actually figuring out, okay, if you were a legislator, what would you cut out of the budget and what would you add and why and how would you convince your colleagues? So, you know, that hands-on piece of Sorensen is so critical. Mm -hmm. So Ramonda, talk about some of the more specific aspects of your programs. Sure, sure. Leadership Prince William is a lot of similar aspects, except we do it in Prince William County, mm -hmm. second largest county in, in, in Virginia. So you get those behind the scenes looks. Uh, look, um, one of our classes really focused on city planning and all of us laid out the maps of Prince William County. There's a lot of development, there's a lot of building that's occurring in Prince William County. And so it was really important for us to kind of look at what that process looks like as a resident, as a community leader. How are those decisions made that affect us, that affect our children, where our schools go, where our churches are built, where our libraries are. And so having that up close personal session where we're sitting there, we're the city planners for the day. Uh, we brought in experts from the Econ Economic Development Authority that sat with us and, and walked, the, walked us through that process. So that for me was very eye-opening because a lot of times we see buildings that are going up and we, we're wondering why is that happening or, or why did they choose that spot? But to kind of peel back the veil and see why those decisions are made was very important to us um, and to have that experience. But even things going to, um, we went to a fire and rescue um, location that's out in a training facility out in Prince William County that I had no idea was even there. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, oh, I know Prince William County. Mm -hmm. But when I went through this program to really see the different parts of the county that I'd never realized were there was important. So to go there and, and get in the fire trucks or to see how they go through those training skills or um, working with the SWAT teams and finding out this is what the process is that they're using to protect us as Prince William County residents was important. And so we got to see those different pieces up close um, and personal. We talked to our local officials about how some of the decisions are made in our county um, for different, different aspects. We talked to Board of County Supervisors, to the mayor, to delegates that came in and talked to us. And I thought that that was very important because our class is made up of moms and CEOs and entrepreneurs. And to have that one-on-one -on -one, um, conversation with them was important. And Leadership Prince William allowed those conversations to take place. So there was a lot of different things we um, got to experience. Um, there's Potomac Shores, a new um, community that's being developed in Prince William County. And we had the experience of seeing a lot of Potomac Shores being built before even the general public did. And so because of Leadership Prince William, that occurred. Mm -hmm. And it just opened our eyes to a lot of things that were occurring right where we lived, that we passed by every day, that we never stop and say, oh, now I know that that's there and how can I make a difference with that? So those are huge benefits of going through a program like this. So a different type of teaching that you're doing is through SOAR. Mm -hmm. So when I know you are, you're a feeler. I know you as a person, that's very important to you. Absolutely. And empowerment is very important. Can you talk about maybe some of the differences in that and how people learn through those methods as opposed to some of the ones we've just been talking about? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, Ramonda Young Inc. really focuses on the women. And a lot of these programs, there's a leadership program that focuses on women or men, or, but for my own uh, organization, it focuses on women. And it really talks, has those real uh, candid conversations. We bring in influential women from different industry CEOs and have them face to face with women who are wanting to start a business or already have a business or are moms and looking to transition into to being an entrepreneur. And I think one of the big differences um, that have, has come and stood out in my mind was just the, the, the candidness of it all. We can peel back the layers and have like a girlfriend's type of conversation. Whether you're a CEO, whether you are a, a tycoon in a different, different industry, we now can have those conversations very candid. And the women really enjoy that, that mm -hmm. kind of candor, that they can ask these questions of a person that they may not have ever met, may not even have the opportunity to meet. And they can ask those questions and get the responses right there um, in a very personal way that touches them. So, yeah, I am a feeler. <laughs> and that is important to me, that the transparency that we get when we talk to people. Leadership Prince William definitely provides transparency. Um, but Ramonda Young Inc. provides um, a different sense of it, a different angle. And I'm not sure the difference of it, uh -huh. how uh -huh. to articulate those differences. But it's definitely a different um, feel overall. It is. You know, both of you mentioned youth as a part of your programs. Can mm -hmm. you talk just for a few seconds about why it's important or how your organization mm -hmm. focuses on youth? 
We have a high school leadership program and a college leaders program, and mm -hmm. they're both uh, summer residential programs uh, for um, one or two or three or four weeks at UVA with trips around the state and some time in Richmond. And um, I have to tell you, one of the, the uh, days I look forward to every year is doing the interviews for these youth programs mm -hmm. because these are young people who are so excited about the opportunities in the world and they've already made a lot of differences through volunteer activities and Excellent. academic and um, uh, other community activities and they're looking to make their mark in politics. They're not always sure exactly what that will be like, and to be honest, not all of the um, the folks in the grown-up <laughs> programs are either. Um, but they they're uh, they're not they don't carry the baggage yet um, that a lot of uh, older folks do mm -hmm. in politics, and it's a great opportunity yes. to educate mm -hmm. them on these issues that we talked about before um, without those jaded lenses. Mm -hmm. um, they do many of the same types of of activities as the folks in the um, more senior programs do, um, but, but sometimes with a fresher perspective and um, maybe more open-minded. Many of the high school and college students have not labeled themselves yet mm. as belonging to a party. We actually discourage them from identifying uh, with a party because uh, that might tend to constrain their approach to a policy issue. They get to know each other first as Virginians and then see what happens next. Excellent. And the last, last question, Ramada, how is sure. youth involved in what you do? Absolutely. Uh, with leadership, and Prince William in particular, uh, we have a youth leadership summer camp. And it's been amazing to see the young people from a wide spectrum of communities and backgrounds come together and learn from other leaders. A lot of alum are part of this leadership um, summer camp. And so it was really important for us to teach them and show them the, the different officials in our area, the arts scene in our area, the public service um, organizations in our area. And it's been great for them as well. It's kind of a micro leadership Prince William that we do for the youth, that they get to travel to the different um, locales and meet those representatives. So it's been great. A lot of them walk out and didn't realize that certain, again, certain areas existed, even in their, from their vantage point as um, high schoolers. And it's been a phenomenal the mentoring program that we do. Uh, we have a lunch and learn where we sit down with the youth for lunch during that, that leadership camp. And they just, tables are filled with youth and tables are filled with um, the leaders and alum of Leadership Prince William and we have candid conversations with them. Fabulous. They sit there and have prepared questions that they ask us, kind of an interview. So they walk away not just having a, a great lunch but also a great experience Fabulous. with leaders that they can talk and interact with and ask questions that they may not have had the opportunity to ask before. So. Wonderful. The youth is important to us. Well, I want to thank you both for being a guest, for being guests on A Seat at the Table. You know, I think this conversation has been really wonderful. And like I said in the beginning, you know, leadership development is something that's very important to me. Starting VLI almost 10 years ago, I see the importance of preparing people to be involved. There are so many huge decisions that we need to make in our society on a lot of different levels, but it's important that we have people who are ready to step up to the table and have a, a, a seat at the table and be prepared to do so. So thank you for joining us for A Seat at the Table.